In the previous video, we covered how to set the correct media type for all of your content. In this video, we'll be going over how to organize your content into multiple playlists. But before we get into the details, we first need to understand what's the difference between a shared playlist and a station playlist. One of the big advantages of the SAM Broadcaster Cloud system is that you can share one music library between multiple stations. This allows you to upload content once and have it available for many stations. So if I go here to the gear icon and I say switch stations, what you'll notice is that under my account I have three different stations. The first two stations, SamCloud Hits and SamCloud Power 1, share the same music library, while another third station has another library. So I have two music libraries and of the first music library is shared by two different stations. I'm going to hold control down as I click on these stations and this will open each station in a new tab and this will allow me to illustrate what I'm going to show you a little bit better. So shared playlists are basically visible to all stations within the same library. So if I go ahead and create a new playlist and let's say top 40 and I press enter here what you'll notice if I jump to the second station that top 40 playlist is also available here so if I go ahead and drag items into it those items will also be displayed on the second station however if I create a new playlist over here let's call it hit music and I drag a few items in here you will notice that that playlist is not visible under the station playlist here that's because the station playlists are only visible to the specific station they were created on if you only have a single station of course the distinction between shared playlist and station playlist doesn't matter all that much but it is worth thinking about in case you want to add more f uh, stations in the future so you might as well organize your library with that in mind for example if you have station ids that's specific to the station rather put that in a shared uh, in a per station playlist so that if you create stations in the future the whole job will become much easier for you to do so. Now that you better understand what the difference is between a shared playlist and a per station playlist, let's go over some of the reasons why you would want to organize your music into playlists. The first important reason is to provide a curated list of items for a play block rotation. For example, I could create a top 40 playlist which shows the current top 40 items that I might have in my library and maybe I can create another one called let's call it golden oldies and maybe create another one that says 80s music etc etc so the idea is that you manually populate these playlists with content that matches the description and then you can later use this in your play blocks I'll quickly show you how, how that's done but we'll cover that actually in a much more detail in a different video so if I go to the schedule here and let's go ahead and create a new play block I'm just going to call it test play block and what I can do now is scroll down for those playlists I just created and just drag and drop them in here let me get rid of that one so now I'm telling the system to pick one track out of 80s music and then another track out of top 40 again we'll cover this in more detail in another video but this is one of the main reasons you want to organize your content into playlists the other reason is if you use the queue for rotation you can and let me just show you quickly let me drag a few items in here if you want 
to organize your content and be very specific in the order which items play. So I can say, play one song, play one sweeper, then one stinger after another song, and stinger again. And I can even duplicate certain items. So there I'm adding that sweeper twice into the playlist. So now I have a very specific order of how the item should play. And at the time which I want it played, I can simply drag the items into the queue. And the queue will play those items exactly from top to bottom. I can also automate the, the task of adding a playlist into the queue via the event scheduler. But again, that will cover in much more detail at a later stage. The other important reason to use playlists is simply for editing. This is kind of why we have the scratch pad item here that's permanent and you can't actually delete that or rename it. It's for you to quickly add items into it and kind of edit the playlist. And then, you know, there's lots of things you can do with it. One of them is to bulk edit the media type by just dragging and dropping it um, into the media types filters. Or alternatively, like I've shown before, just dragging and dropping it into the queue. Or you can even drag and drop it into another playlist. So let me show you that quickly. So AT Music is empty. So if I take Scratchpad, drag and drop it onto 80s Music, and I go in there, you'll see the items were added there. So Playlist allows you to bulk edit or bulk modify items in a quick and easy way. Don't worry if all of the uses where I just explained about Playlist is not entirely clear to you. As we go through the rest of the tutorials, it will make more sense to you. Okay, so let's go over some of the basics. To create a new playlist, just select either Shared Playlist or Station Playlist, and then go ahead and right-click on it and choose New Playlist. And then you can just type in a new name for the playlist. Please note that you can only have the same playlist name once. So if I try to create it again, it will say the name already exists. So let's just rename it to be. The big reason for that is to avoid confusion when you're adding a play or using a playlist in the play blog or searching for a playlist. Um, so you don't accidentally put content into the wrong one. So having unique names just helps for that. Once a playlist is created, you can easily rename it again by right-clicking on it and changing the name. Or ultimately, you can go ahead and remove a playlist. Again, right-clicking and saying remove playlist. And adding content to a playlist is also really easy. Most of the time, you can just drag and drop items into it. Also note, you can drag the same item into a playlist multiple times. Or if you want to make sure the content in it is unique, you right click within it and say remove and remove duplicates. And that will only leave you a unique list of items in the playlist. Another thing to note is maybe you're searching for items and you're on this view. You can select a few items here, right click, say add to, add to playlist and then choose the playlist in which to add to. And now if we jump back, you'll see those items were added to my playlist. So those are the basic of playlist management. The final thing to note is that you can actually upload content directly into the playlist. Um, this is shown in more detail in the upload content videos, but I'll quickly go over it here again. I can just right click on the playlist area, say upload files. And this will bring up the upload interface. And the important part to notice here is it says upload music into playlist A. So any songs I drag and drop here to upload will now immediately pop up into my My Playlist A playlist. A few other things you need to know about playlists. The first is 
you can put up a maximum of 30,000 items in a specific playlist. We do recommend keeping your playlist much smaller than that though. So try not to keep putting more than 5,000 items into a particular playlist. The second one is a common misconception is if you add a music item or a content item into a per station playlist that that item will be invisible to a second station on the same library. That's not true. The physical audio content that's added to the same library is visible to all stations that share that library. But the playlist is only visible, uh, a per station playlist is only visible to the specific station it was created on. So it's important to understand that distinction. This concludes our tutorial on how to organize your library into playlists. The real fun starts when you're using playlists combined with play blocks and scheduled events. So watch out for those videos and also there's another video showing you how to import and export a playlist file.